Hi, um, I am going to be demoing here a WordPress install on Ubuntu 16.04. This will be a droplet that has the LAMP, um, the LAMP software installed. So I'm starting with that droplet here, this 159.89.142.04. And um, I will just be working through the instructions on that. Now the instructions I'm using are on DigitalOcean. This is the how to install WordPress with LAMP on Ubuntu 16.04. And if you look at these instructions, there are some prerequisites. And the two prerequisites that I am going to use are I'm going to create a sudo user on my server so that that user will be the owner of WordPress. And then I'm also going to create, you know, I've already, as I said, got the LAMP stack installed. So I've got the Linux Apache MySQL PHP stack software already on that droplet. I am not going to be doing the secure site with SSL. That might be left for a, a further project. But um, for this video, I'll be doing just these two. Um, so before I get into the first step on this uh, set of instructions, I need to create this sudo user. And um, I'm going to do that using this page here. So if you look at the Ubuntu 16.04 setup guide um, from DigitalOcean, it talks about um, the root login. And that's what we've typically used to log into our server. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So um, if I'm on SSH root at, OK. And this is the first time I've logged into this droplet. So I'm just getting the question about um, known host. OK, and, and when I log in, just a reminder for this version um, on DigitalOcean, I'm on the LAMP application, and it's going to remind me that I will be serving from bar www.html when I type in that this uh, URL um, in my browser. Um, the PHP installation, I can test that that's properly installed with this. Um, I have, um, I am able to use ports 2280 and 443. And then I can find my DigitalOcean passwords in this root slash hidden folder dot DigitalOcean password. So that I'm going to need for my uh, installation. So let's just, let's just see what we have in that folder we have, or in that file we have root.digitalocean. And you can see that that file contains the root MySQL password. So I'm going to need that password when I go to install WordPress. But for now, I'm logged into the droplet. And what I'm interested in doing is setting up my new user. And you can read about this and see that you know running applications off root is discouraged for security reasons. Um, you could use root in this in this situation and run it if you're not concerned about security. The reason why I would encourage you to do this is because if you're working through the instructions in the WordPress install, it will refer to um, Sammy, the user that they've created on these instructions. And that might make following the WordPress install instructions easier. So and, and it's good practice. So we're going to create a new user, and I'm just going to use their user. This Sammy could be anybody, Becky, Joe, anybody, any name you want. But if you do create a name, you're going to want to remember that username. So first of all, I just type in um, add user Sammy. OK, and the first thing it does is ask me for a password. And whatever I enter here, I need to remember. Um, to keep this simple for myself right now, I'm just going to make the password the same, Sammy. And then it'll ask me to retype it, and I'll do that. And I'll just say Sammy Do the DigitalOcean. Um, I you know these are just arbitrary. You know, I don't even know if they're actually required. So, but I'm just going to. Put something in there. 
and the information is correct. So basically I have created a new username, Sammy, now. Um, I'm still logged in as root, um, so, you know, I'm still root, but I now have this user, Sammy. Uh, and it says, yeah, you can just hit enter on any field you want to skip, so you don't have to enter anything there. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to give Sammy root privileges. So the whole idea is that I want a user that is not root, because that has some specific qualities that can hurt my security system, but I want that user to be able to have root privileges, and that user will be able to use the sudo command um, to execute those privileges. So they'll have to preface whatever command they do with sudo in order to get the privileges. And to do that, we are going to add the user to the sudo group. So that's what this command does here. So I'll just type that in, and now uh, that user um, is, is able to run sudo commands, which are essentially administrator commands, which they'll need for, for doing a lot of the you know, software installation. Okay, and now because uh, we we do want to um, we do want to have this user able to be to be able to SSH into that user, we need to create the the keys for them. Okay, so we'll run SSH keygen. All right, so we're still working through this um, this user setup. We're on step four add public key authentication. Now we're doing this so that we can log in from our local machine to SAMI. You know, we've, we've already set it up so that we can log in from local machine to root. Um, now we want to do the same thing for SAMI. And these instructions tell you, um, first this is talking about generating a key on your local machine. You've already done that. Don't do it again. You don't need to so you don't want to definitely don't want to replace that key. So don't don't do the step to generate a new key on your local machine. Um, that what you really want to do is copy that key, that pub key that's on your local machine, into SAMI. Now um, they give you two options, and it's dependent on how you created the droplet. I'm just going to tell you don't do option one; that will not work for you but instead go to option two, and it's, it's something that you'll be familiar with, manually installing the key. And that's basically what we're going to do is go out to our, our local machine and get a copy in the buffer, and then add it to um, SAMI's um, authorized keys file. But let's take a look how that works. So first of all, um, we're going to SU to SAMI. And what that means, that's a command, SU super user, that lets us uh, go to um, so here I am. Um, I'm, I'm logged into my uh, I'm logged in as root. I'm out here on my um, droplet, and I'm going to su to Sammy. Okay, so here I am now. I'm who am I? I'm Sammy. I'm logged in as Sammy. Um, I have I'm sitting in Sammy's root, and uh, there are, is no SSH folder, but I am going to need to create one to put an authorized keys files in. So they give you the instructions here for creating this SSH folder. So it's calling the makedir uh, out here, makedir SSH. Now if I LSA, I've got this SSH folder. And then the next step is I'm going to set some permissions on that folder. And this will just allow me to write to it. Uh, and then next step. I'm going to actually create an authorized keys file. So Nano will help me to create that file. And then I'm going to go back. I've got a, a separate command window open here. This is my local drive. Here I am on my Mac. And um, I am going to get a hold of that, of that SSH key, that pub key. So. You, you probably remember that this um, pub key. So let's just cat that. IDRSA pub. And copy that from the SSHRSA all the way to the end of my email. Copy that to the buffer. Come over to nano, paste it. Okay, you didn't see it pasting there. Let's try that again. 
Uh, I've been using control C, control C, and then control V. Okay, good. There it is. It's a great big long, um, you know, big long key pasted in there. That looks good. Now I'm just going to uh, get out of Nano and save this file. So I'm going to do my what? Control Control X. It's going to ask me if I want to save it. I'm going to say yes. It's going to write it to the authorized key file. Uh, yes. And now if I cat that. So this is again. Um, this is again Sammy's authorized keys file, and I've just pasted my local key in there, so that means I'm going to be able to log in locally to Sammy. But there, I think there's another step in here. Um, we want to change the mode. This just changes permissions on that authorized key, restricts it a little bit. So back I am in my Sammy login, change mode, and then uh, I can exit. Now, when I exit, where am I? Um, I'm back as root. So I've logged out of Sammy, and that takes me back to root, where I started from. OK, now the instructions are going to tell you step five to disable um, password authentication. Uh, and I'm just going to say, don't do step five. I don't want to introduce anything that might hinder future troubleshooting. So just go ahead and skip step five. Right now, you are done with creating the SAMI, and we should be able to SSH. So now I'm logged in. I'm back to my Mac. I'm back on local machine. You know, I'm my I'm my my Mac user, uh, but I should be able to log in as SAMI. So I should be able to SSH directly to SAMI, and this is a convenience, um, but it will come in useful. So to have a, a bona fide user on my droplet named Sammy in addition to um, in addition to that. I think I skipped one step. No, we've got everything there. So so we've got our Sammy. He can, and Sammy is able to, he's been added to the pseudo pseudo group. So pseudo group so he he can uh, also or he or she can run admin commands. All right, so let's take a look. Now we're ready to start installing WordPress. All right, so I'll go back to this tab where, you know, this is where I started out, where I realized, oh, I want to create a sudo user. I want LAMP, um, but I'm skipping this securing with SSL. But So they're going to the first step, and the first step is MySQL. And I want to be logged in as root. So let's go back and make sure that. So right now, if I say, who am I? I'm Sammy. I don't want that. So I'm going to exit out of Sammy and go back to root. So we're not, we're not going to use Sammy to install this. We're, you will see how we use Sammy um, to own it, but we're not going to use Sammy to install it. So we're, we're logged in as root, and now we want to sign into MySQL. Now MySQL is a database, and so it requires username and password. Um, we talked about how the password was made available when you first log into your droplet. So I think I should have that command in here somewhere. Let's see. I've got a lot of different things in here, but let's just take a look at history. I'm going to just look and see if I can um, find that command. I'll use grep and see if I can find something called, I think it had slash root, or let's see, it had dot digital in it. Uh, nope, okay, so I can't find that command. So, um, oh, there it is right there, DigitalOcean password. Okay, so this is where the password for MySQL is. And I want to, I'm going to cat that right here before, so that I can copy it in the buffer and use it. So digital, digital, uh, let's see. Oh, I'm still on my Mac. I'm sorry, that's why I'm not seeing anything. Let's sign back on to um, root. So I'm in root. Yeah, because I sign into root. Again, every time you sign into root, you get this um, this reminder. So if I cat that root.digitalocean password, there it is. So let's just 
highlight that and copy it into the buffer because what we're going to do now is we're going to type MySQL-U and that's, that stands for user. So you, I'm going to sign on as root dash P. So let's see what happens there. MySQL-U U is root dash P. And it says what's your password. And I'm just going to paste this in here. And hopefully that signs me on. Yes. So I control V the what I had in the buffer. And now I'm signed on to MySQL, which you can tell because it's got this MySQL prompt. Okay. Now what I'm going to be doing in MySQL is creating a WordPress database and creating a user that will own that database or that belongs to that database. And, it, and, and I'm just going to use copy and paste to do this. So I'll I'll copy this create database. So the name of the database is WordPress. That could be anything you want, but I'm going to use WordPress because it's, it's easy to remember. It's what's in the docs. So I'm just going to paste that in there and hit enter. And the, the OK tells me that the, that the query was executed um, with no problem. So I can assume I have a WordPress database. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a user. So um, I, I uh, and I'm going to give them permissions too. So you can see I'm doing kind of doing that all in one step here. I'm saying grant all, which means all permissions, making this the most, you know, a very powerful user on WordPress.star, which means all the tables, all the objects in the WordPress database to a user named WordPress user who is, who is a user on localhost, which means this machine identified by password, which means that's what his password is. So if I was going to sign on with this user, I would, the username would be WordPress user and his password would be password. So I'm doing a lot with this one command. I'm just going to copy it into the buffer and then I'm just going to hit enter. So now I have a, now I have a WordPress user. Um, and then I'm going to um, use this flush privileges, which is just a MySQL command so that MySQL is aware of all these changes. And that's all I need to do there. And then I'm just going to exit. So that, I've created a MySQL um, database name, you know, it's, I've got MySQL as a result of loading the LAMP stack. Now I've created a database. I've created a user who has permission on everything in the database. The user's name is WordPress user and the password is password. Okay. So let's go on and start installing some software. First thing we're going to do is this sudo app get update. Now this could end up being really, this installations could take a while, so I may kind of chop those out of this video. But let's get that going. Uh, so the update, that just goes out and gets all the latest Ubuntu code. And this is pretty common that you know, even though you, down, you just downloaded it, you may, there may be some updates. Lots of updates happen in this world. Um, and then now here I'm going to get some specific uh, extensions for PHP. So I'm just copying those in the buffer and running that. Um, and it's telling me that it's going to take up about 3 meg maybe. So let's just look at the instru next instructions as we're waiting for that to install. Um, so once we've installed all that, we'll be doing um, a restart on Apache so that that's all available. And then we'll be um, doing some configuration. So how is this doing? Yeah, it takes up. Oh, look, it's all done. OK. So the next step, um, again, is to restart Apache. So I'm just walking through these instructions. Um, And then the next step is the HT access. And this is where we're going to give WordPress and any of its plugins the ability to um, do mod rewrite. Mod rewrite does stuff like redirect you, send you to different, um, send you to different routes in, in the sort of navigation. So we're going to go into this comp file and we're going to be adding this little chunk. So let's Let's bring up that comp file with nano. And 
Um, so what we want to do is grab this chunk, and it says toward the bottom of the file, add the following block. So let's go back in here. Let's scroll down and see how long this file is. I bet you guys know how to go all the way to the bottom without having to scroll like this. I guess it looks like I could, could do a control M slash. Let's try that. Control M. Control M slash. Oh, that's once a line number. Let's say 50. Ah, it doesn't really get us very far. Um, this is where your all the practice that you got working with these editors is really going to pay off. But um, this is definitely, I can see there's a lot of these directory commands, but we just want to follow the instructions and get down toward the bottom of the file. And then we can paste in our, our allow override. And then we'll do the control X. And yes, we want to save the changes. It goes to Apache Comp. OK, so if I do like a tail on that, I should see my changes. Apache. Apache to comp. Yeah, so there's my change down at the bottom of the file. So that tail command just shows what's at the bottom of a file. And then we're going to do, uh, we're going to enable this read-write mode that we just did. So don't worry if you don't understand everything that these commands are telling you to do. It's nice to look at, look at the description of it. And um, then it tells me I need to restart Apache. And we've seen this before in installing the dynamic and static apps. Um, and then we want to enable the changes that we just did. And this is all to kind of set up the environment so that WordPress can, can do its thing. And it says you might see that and um, could not reliably determine the fully qualified name. Syntax OK. So yeah, I saw that. And they say, that's OK. Uh, you could suppress it doing this, but don't bother. I think that's fine. And then we're going to do another restart here. Um, now we're ready to download uh, WordPress. And the way that they have you do this is they have you download it into a temp directory, and then we'll copy it into its, its the directory where it will live later. But So we're just going to cd temp, and, and then we're going to use that curl command. And I don't know if any of you practice with that, but that curl command basically goes out and just grabs a file on the internet. Um, so cd slash temp. So make sure you're in that temp. Is there anything there? Yeah, see, maybe one of the other installations use that too. Um, and so now I'm just going to paste this curl command. So it's actually going out to the WordPress site, grabbing this tar, zipped tar file. So it's like this compressed, um, zipped up file. And it is just going to bring that down. So now I've got this latest tar g zip. And then I'm going to run the tar command, which is going to, the tar command with the xzvf will unzip this file and uncompress it. So we'll just paste that in there. And wow, a whole bunch of stuff now. So if I look over here, I can see that I now have a WordPress folder. Um, if I ls WordPress, uh, you'll see there's a whole bunch of stuff. So this is basically the WordPress installation. Um, and then we're going to move this um, over to the document root, which is our var www.html. Um, but first, we're going to add this dummy ht access file and set permissions. So um, that way it'll be all ready for it later. OK, so we're going to use touch. The touch command just creates a file, and it's going to create it under temp WordPress. So we get this ht access. So like if we were to do ls la uh, WordPress, we should see, yes, there's our ht access. I just created it. Um, then we're going to set some permissions on there. That change mode is going to do that. Give it some specific permission. And then we're going to copy over 
the sample config file to a file name that WordPress reads. So they provide you with the sample config file. Kind of we've seen this before where there's a config file and you don't really want to modify the, the actual you know, sample file. So we're going to copy it to that. And we'll just, we're just doing all this in the temp area to prepare it for its final destination. And then um, we will run this upgrade. We'll set up this upgrade directory. So I'm just stepping through these steps and then I'm going to now sudo cp. I, I'm going to copy everything that's under WordPress into my var www.html. And before I do that, um, you guys, if you did the var ls, let's say la var www.html, you will probably see the directories for the watts that you installed, um, you know, dynamic and static pages if you're using the same droplet. I don't see that because I have created a new droplet for this, but you can install this right into it. It's going to end up in the root of this file. So basically, let's run that sudo command here. It will copy, um, oops, we don't need to do that. Um, let's grab that. Let me grab that sudo command. Sudo, sudo, I've heard it called both. Um, so it's just giving us, for, we're root, so we don't even really need it, but it just makes us able to do admin commands. So let's do this big copy. So we're copying to var HTML. And now when we do our ls var HTML, you can see that all those files that we downloaded for WordPress are now in the place where Apache expects to find files that it can serve. OK, so now it's step five, configuring the WordPress directory. Um, so we're going to set up, and this is where our SAMI, or whatever the user we created, comes into play. We are going to do a change own, change ownership, so that SAMI is going to own this, is going to own www data. And let's just take a look. If we look at this, you can see www data um, is a group right now. If you look the way that um, these, the LSLA command formats, what it shows you um, is it shows you the user and the group who own whatever files or folders you see there, files or directories. Right now, all of these are no group, and we're going to change that. So let's run this sudo chone. I'm just going to check here. Let's see. So I want that. We want to do uh, pseudo chone. Okay. Now I think. I think when we do this, now see all of these files are owned. Sammy is the, the user that owns them, and www.data is the group. And the important thing about www.data is that they, you need that ownership in order to be able to serve these files up. So that's part of um, getting this so that, you know, like index.html that was created, that was already there, it was owned by www.data and therefore it could be served. But we needed to make sure that all the rest of these were also. So that's what that step does. And then this is a step that um, is going to set a bit that's going to help with um, maintaining that ownership. And that's kind of, kind of a difficult to read command. It's going to go in and find all these files and set this, um, it's going to add some, some uh, uh, permission that will make this available. And then we're going to, um, what, this change mode, we, before remember we would see 660, 700. This is another way, and this is just G plus W saying, I'm, you know, add write permission to this content file. And that's because that's where, our, when we write blogs, we need uh, WordPress to be able to actually write to that directory. So these are all just helping to get ready for WordPress. And then we're going to add some more 
here, some more permissions on the themes, and we're going to add some permissions on the plugins. And I'm probably going to show you some more permissions that I found were useful, um, but let's just follow these instructions for now. The next thing that we're going to do is set up this uh, WordPress config file. And we use we go and fetch this salt, um, and it just generates some kind of random keys, um, and we're going to use those. And they, they're used for randomization, and we provide them to to WordPress for its own use. But let's let's just follow these in directions. So we're going to run this curl statement, and wow, we see okay, we've got a whole bunch of kind of crazy looking stuff there, all matched up with different um, named keys. And we're going to use that in Nano. Or we're going to go into Nano and we're going to um, we're going to actually copy those into Nano. So um, we're going to open up this WP config file and it's going to say put your key there and I think we can just copy and paste that. So I'm going to try that. So we just select that, control C, and then we're going to do nano var www html wp config. Okay, nano var html. It's called wp config php. So you've had experience modifying PHP config files. I'm just going to go down and find that chunk. Okay, there it is. Um, so let's say, just see if I can just paste that in there. Paste that in there. And now I can just get rid of all of these files. And again, the more that you know, the less you'll have to do what I'm doing now, which is to just, I'm actually a VI user, um, and I not even do that all that much, but um, this, I don't know the command to cut this text. I can see a control K there, but I am just going to let this run. And so you can see why learning a to be good at a, command line editor could save you a lot of time. But anyway, the point is we want to get those keys into this file and we're following the instructions on this page using Nano. Okay, so um, now we can do our control X and yes, we're saving them and yes, we're writing them and let's just cat that. I always kind of check my work. It's kind of probably not necessary, but let's just see. WP config PHP. Okay. So oh, there's a lot of stuff in there, but yeah, there it is. So we basically, we ran the salt, we got this, use the salt fetch, got the, these keys and then just pasted them in there. Okay, so we've got that. And now we um, are, we need to make a few more changes in this WP config file. And you know this is where you got to be careful. You know little little mistakes here, little typos can cause you problems and it could be difficult to troubleshoot. So let's just take a look at this. We're going to go back into that WP config file and we're going to set up, the database name, which is WordPress, the user, which is WordPress user, and the password, which is password. Um, and then we're going to add a whole new define um, that's going to give this fs method. So let's let's do that. Go back into nano wp config, and we'll find those existing. F okay, so there we are. db name. And what we're going to enter here is WordPress. 
right? So we're just going off of this. Just just like we set up our our MySQL, we're just providing that information to WordPress. WordPress user and then password. So yes, yeah, because the WordPress program will use these values uh, to help it, um, you know, it's going to use it to log into the database and save things. Okay, so these uh, go on and let's just put it our new define right down there. Okay. So let's just save that. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. And we can cat that again and just see if we see that in there. This would be up here. Yep, there it is. WordPress, WordPress user. So this is looking good. All right, we're at step six, and we're now ready to actually bring up our WordPress. Let's hope this works. So um, we're going to be grabbing this uh, URL, and what does this say? Uh, we're going to just use HTTP and bring that up. Ah, great. Okay. So we're going to do some things here that you might want to jot some notes down on. But yes, let's pick English for the language. And the site title, we could change it later. But right now, I'm just going to say first WordPress. But if you have some blog name, blog in mind, you can do that as well. Now, this username and password, This um, there are ways we can fix this, but it's good to um remember it so you see how it says you'll need to use this password to log in please store it in a secure location so i'm going to just um, make it so this is now a wordpress user um, who's going to log into wordpress they're not logging into DigitalOcean. they're not logging into the digital ocean or to your droplet sql this is a person that will go to the web bring up this wordpress configure it bring it, and want to add things you know, from the WordPress application. So you do want to remember this. Um, let's make, so what I'm going to do, and this is not good security, but I'm going to do this right now, and I'll probably destroy this droplet anyway, so uh, I'm just going to make it Becky. But I recommend making it something stronger. Um, and be sure to write it down, because if you forget it and you want to come back, you know, you are going to need to log in um, just be sure to write that down. And I'm going to say, yeah, I'm, it's OK, because I'm just doing this for practice. So I'm going to use this weak password. Um, I will put my password in or my email in here. OK. And um, that's up to you. Um, you know, if you're trying to do something more private, you might want to discourage it. OK. so. Becky, Becky, and this is actually, you know, this is this is sort of this is a this is a WordPress administrator. So there's someone who can configure WordPress from the web. So um, that's why it has a password. But let's go ahead and do that and install WordPress. And we'll log in. And I'm gonna put remember me just in case. Um, Log in. All right. I'll go ahead and ah, I don't need to save it. Um, so now what you're seeing here, look at the URL. You've got your your droplet IP address and you've got WP admin. So WP admin is where you do administrative work in in um, WordPress. Um, and I encourage you to start exploring this um, because you may want to use WordPress for your final project. But this is basically the WordPress installation. OK, so, uh, going back to the instructions, um, we've, they've got some screenshots here of what we just did. And you can look at that. Um, and then we want to make our WordPress able to be updated. So we're going to run a few more commands um, back in our droplet. 
we are going to change ownership of everything recursively to www data, and that's so that it's servable. So we're back here, pseudo chown, run that, and then we are going to lock the permissions down for security. So give it to Sammy. Um, and okay. And then there's a little bit of information there. All right, so this should get you started. Um, there may be problems along the way. Be, you know, get in touch if you run into any. Um, and, and if you start exploring and have questions, please throw them up on Slack so we can all hear about it. Um, and then, um, of course, for your assignment, you'll also, you know, right now I'm running this off of my IP address. You'll want to go create uh, um, a um, subdomain for your, for your uh, domain name, you know, like a WordPress subdomain, so that I basically would just type in uh, WordPress dot Becky Peltz online in order to get to this, but th and, th and that should complete your assignment. But that and this gets you through installing WordPress. All right.